This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Mr. Two Tanks himself, Mr. O'Hara Davies. She's had a grueling session there, a bit of sparring, a bit of everything. How are you feeling, mate? How's things? I'm feeling good. Uh, I'm feeling ready. Uh, you know, for what's next, I'm the manager now for the world title, so I'm managing him every day. Focus, focus, focus. Even if I ain't got a date, I know that I need to improve and I've just got to keep my head in the right place, so I've got to live in the gym, in camp or not in camp. And is it important now where you're on the horizon of a world title, it's just there, it's within touching distance now. You're almost getting your, the, the, the reps in now, you're getting in ready so whenever the, the fight date comes or whenever the camps, you'll have your 8 to 12 weeks but you're even ready to, you're ready to go then, do you know what I mean? You're in the fittest possible shape that you could be in. You see what I want to do now? I don't really want to use camp to get fit. I don't want to use camp to get fit and to lose the weight. I want to be on weight, I want to be fit. So once camp actually, actually gets going, I just got to focus on the skill, on my sharpness, and on my timing. You know, a lot of people, even I've done it in the past, I've literally waited until six weeks before the fight to start getting in shape, to start getting fit. Then you can't focus on the skill. I feel like as a professional boxer, you have to be, you have to be quite, uh, be quite disciplined to not drink, be uh, to keep in good like company, and you know to be in the gym all year round. Apart from a week after the fight, you have a week or two off, and you get right back in the gym, it's our job. So we got to live as if it's a nine to five and that's what I'm doing. And you look at your, the time in your career now, you've been experienced, you've been to many different gyms. Now you're on, you know, you've, you've taken setbacks, you look at where you are now. What position would you say you're in now? Would you say that this is the best time in your career you've ever had with your whole team around you? 100%, you know, this is the best time uh, in my boxing career. You know, I'm number one uh, in the WBA. I've never been this high up before. I've never been on the verge of a world title shot, you know, yet. So a lot of my boxing career, I've been not focused, I've been messing about, I've been on social media too much, I've been trying to act up and I've been trying to sell myself outside the ring, whereas now my mindset is more sell yourself inside the ring. Don't go online and try and start, uh, and start beef with everyone and start like controversies to get views and you know, to be hated. This is how my old team and my old management advised me and I was ill-advised. You know, I was paying these guys and they were giving me the wrong advice my whole boxing career. And you know, that led me down a dark slope. You know, my boxing career could have ended, you know, uh, with certain tweets that I've sent. You know, it's bad. Like nowadays I look back and I was like, damn, even though I got ill advised, I should have been I should have been I should have been like mature enough in myself to not listen to that advice. But I guess I made a few mistakes and that's what other people coming up, they can look at that and they can learn from it. Now I've got the best team around me. They say to me, be yourself, be yourself. Don't try and sell any image, sell myself. Do you think you'd be where you are now without those sort of mistakes that you've made? Would I be where, I, I believe if I didn't make those mistakes, I would have been where I'm at now many years ago, many years ago. But you know, I guess I made the mistakes, I've learned from them. Um, you know, I've learned from my mistakes, but I think the people up and coming, they can look at my mistakes and learn from my mistakes. I feel like a wise man doesn't make those mistakes and learn from them. A wise man learns from another man's mistake. And I wasn't wise enough to learn from the mistakes of those in the past. I should have looked at them and said, damn, they done this and this happened to them. So, you know, I wasn't wise. But I want the, I want the other up and coming fighters to be a lot smarter, a lot wiser than what I was and to learn from the mistakes that I've made. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk, talk, touch on you sort of talking about social media there. A busy weekend for you, sort of a little bit of back and forth with you and Ellen Ellaby. Um, how did that sort of start? What was your sort of uh, thoughts on it? Listen, man, me and Roly have been, um, you know, we're meant to fight by September the 12th. It's been ordered by the WBA for months now. And, you know, they're trying to keep my name out of their mouths. They know that I'm next. They're not trying to tweet about me. They're not trying to talk about me, do no interviews about me. They've been trying to bypass me and get the Ryan Garcia fight. I'm like, uh-uh. Ain't no Ryan Garcia fight happening while I'm next to mine. Ain't no step aside money can get me paid off. I need my world title shot. And don't be tweeting about the Ryan Garcia fight because you're not going to get through me. So I feel a bit dis I feel a bit disrespected that they've been talking about what's next before talking about me. And that shows me that his mind's not in the right place. And I'm fighting that he's going to pay for it. And he's going to pay for everything he said about me. LAB, they're going to pay for keeping my name out their mouths. They're all going to pay. This Brit is going over to the States, or, or wherever the fight is, wherever the fight's here in the States, or in Saudi, no matter where he is, they're going to pay for what they've done. I'm just going to move this camera. Sorry. 
so, so you said there about them making you pay for what they said and you said something about you not being peers and you think about all the experience it's had and now you're going to get your world title shot against Rowley. Is this bigger than boxing for you, would you say? Oh, 100%. This is massive. This, this fact is going to set me up for life. You know, I'll be set for life. This is everyone's goal and everyone's dream when they first get into boxing, to get a world title shot and to become a world champion. And me, just a, a poor kid from the streets of Hackney, didn't have nothing coming up but a goal and a dream and ambitions. And I looked at my idols and what they achieved and I've worked hard enough and I've got myself in the position where I can achieve that and I can set myself up for life and I can be what I've always wanted to be. You know, it's a dream come true and for me it's bigger than boxing. To me, this is legacy. Legacy. And do you feel disrespected in a way where they're talking about Ryan Garcia and they don't want to say your name? Does it, do you feel disrespected by that? Oh, I feel, I, feel, I, feel dis- I feel disrespected so much. I see everyone doing interviews and, and they're naming everyone else. They're naming Regis, Carroll. Carroll's not even a world champion. The guy hasn't ever been a world champion. He's done nothing. But he fought a good fight when he fought against Taylor. He fought a good fight and he got beat. And they're hyping him up as if he's the next best thing. He's, a, he's the biggest fighter at 114, the best at 140. The guy's nothing. The guy's absolutely nothing. And they're bigging up all these other other guys and they're, and they're trying to keep my name out of their mouth. I've been looking at Sky Sports. I've been looking at Eddie Hearn. Looking at, you know, I see the zone and the people that they mention at the 140 weight class and they're keeping my name out of their mouth when <laughs> I'm next in line. I'm going to the top. So... They better recognise. They better recognise. And will it feel good when you have that WBA strap around you? You're now the man that can call the shots. You can call who you want. So will that feel that you're, you're going to have this leverage on, on your side and you'll be like, you guys need to dance on my tune now? Oh, 100%. 100%. You know, these guys, they wrote me off. They thought I was out. They thought I was, you know, they thought I was like, they thought I was a has-been. A lot of people, when they used to mention my name, I see it on Twitter all the time. They say, is the Harley Davis still boxing? Is he retired? Is he fighting? The guy's nothing, the guy's a has-been. He was hyped up, he thought Taylor got beat, and that was the end of his boxing career. It's what they've been saying about me for the last few years. Now, a lot of those same guys are now saying, we've always believed in you, Ohio Davis. We always knew that you are going to get there eventually. I'm like, nah, these guys, they didn't believe in me. They thought I was down and out. Um, but you've got other people that are still keeping my name out of their mouths, and they're still acting as if I'm a has-been. One more fight and they're going to see. I'm not a husband, I'm the man. This is my error. And does it feel even better that you're going to prove all these guys wrong, all the naysayers, people always saying this stuff about you, you're going to prove them all wrong if, when you beat Rowling? My motivation to become more champion is great, but also I've got another motivation, which is to prove everyone else wrong. Everyone that thought I was down and out, everyone else that still thinks that I'm down and out. My aim now, and, and the added motivation, another fuel to that fire, is to prove all of those guys wrong, and I will. Another thing, Eddie Hearn backs you to beat Rowley. Does it sort of feel good that you're sort of, I don't know what the relationship is with you now, but it seems a little more positive than it is um, before. And I mean, it's sort of taken a bit of a liking to you now. Yeah, of course he's taken a liking to me. I'm, I'm number one in the WBA. What boxing promoter ain't going to like me? What boxing promoter is going to say bad things about me? Listen, me and him are never going to see eye to eye on what happened. The fact of the matter is, I got thrown under the bus. They thought I was down and out. If I wasn't number one in the WBA, Eddie Hearn wouldn't mention my name. He wouldn't say anything about me. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm number one in the WBA. Everyone's got my name in their mouth. I'm worth money now. There's money in me. And there's value in me. And I know what it is. It's just business. Before, I thought we were mates. I used to go down to the Metro office. We used to chill, have a talk and all that. Now, we can work together, Eddie Hearn. We can work together. But you've got to pay me. <laughs> you've got to pay me now. Ain't no friendship involved in this stuff now. You can say my name all you want. I'll be your best friend. We can go out for lunch, for dinner, we can go and get a coffee in the morning. But you've got to pay me, because it's business. But also another thing on the other hand, does it sort of, is it important for you to stay with the guys that stayed loyal to you? Sort of, not when you were nothing, but when you, were, when you say you were down and out, the guys that were with you um, when you was down and out, is it important to stay with them now? Like now though, you know, you've got your number one in the WBA, you're on the verge of a world title shot, people are going to want your name, but it's important to stay the people that were true to you as well. I think loyalty is the main thing in this game, you know, and I'm loyal to the guys that were there. When I got thrown under the bus, you know, there's too many to name, but when I got thrown under the bus, there was, you know, a few people that reached out to me where they, when they didn't need to reach out to me and they helped to get my boxing, my boxing career back on the track, back on track to help me be where I'm at now. And without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. You know, I've also got to thank guys like Lee Eaton, Adam Hart, my coach, Will Jones. I was, I was, I've been with Will for years now, not getting no fights. You know, this, you know, this stuff is a business, and 
my coach has got to earn money. And you know, fights that were meant to happen didn't happen. I didn't earn nothing, I wasn't earning anything. And so I feel like he's in the gym coaching me for years and not getting anything for it really. But now I'm getting big facts. I feel like my coach, all these years of hard work of you being with me in the gym, giving up your days and away from your wife and your kids, all of that stuff now is all gonna pay off financially. Because this is because this is a business. As, as much as we're friends, it's a business. And I felt bad for my coach, Bill Jones, you know, in the gym for years, not making anything from me. But now, you know, I've got to stay loyal to these guys. Lee Eaton does his thing for me, you know, does his thing to keep me happy, uh, works out the best deals for me, has the meetings, has the right meetings, and he does everything. And I trust him so much. I trust these guys so much. I don't even know what's next. I don't know what meetings he's having. I'm not on the phone to him every day. What are you doing? I don't need to know every, every detail about what you're doing. I trust him enough to leave it all with him. I say, Lee, you get me a fight date, you get me a deal, and you tell me when and where the fight is. You know, I trust my team, and I think I've got a, I've got a great team around me. And um, I've been with so many managers. I've been with so many coaches throughout my boxing career. And I think now I'm going to end my boxing career with these guys that I'm with now. And is it important to all, is it important also to have tr how much is it trust important for you? Where you t you've been with so many guys and you've been with so many people, but and especially in boxing in a game where it, the trust is so hard to find, is it important to find the guys that you know are real to you? Well, a lot of these managers in this game are dogs, man. I've experienced it, man. Listen, I've done I've done, done a video on my YouTube page every day. You guys go and check out my YouTube page. I done my last video I done was where I spoke about a contract I received of a boxing manager where they was asking for 50% uh, of my earnings, not of what I, uh, not, not, not just of what I earn in boxing, of what I earn outside of boxing. If I could get a job in Asda, I've got to give him 50%, not 15, 50%. And these people thought that I wasn't smart to read through it and they thought I was just going to sign it. And, you know, it was a two-year contract. The part where I talk about how much I've got to pay him was on clause number six. At the end of the contract, it says after the two years is done, clause number six, it continues indefinitely, which means I've got to pay him for the rest of my life. I've got to pay him, if he, I've got to pay him 50% of what I earn for the rest of my life. And I speak about that on my YouTube page. And I'm like, I thought these guys were there for me. These guys, they helped me out. And um, they bought me fucking, they put me boxing gear, they put me running shoes and boxing gloves when I didn't have any. And I thought these guys were there for me, but they, really, but they weren't really there for me. They were dogs and they wanted to earn from me and to rob me and to keep me in the position where and to keep me in the position where I'll need to fight for the rest of my life because I'm not earning enough money. My old manager, where I was doing before, dogs, when I got thrown under the bus, when I got done wrong, they weren't there for me. They phoned me up, yeah, we believe you, but we gotta throw you under the bus. And you know, they were dogs. The people and after that, the people that got in touch with me, the people the people that got in touch with me, I didn't know them, but they've done the best yeah, for me yeah. and it helped me get in the place where I'm at now. They made sure I got paid every fight and I got paid well after every fight. You know, um, it's always been good vibes and good energy and um, and there's been no faults, there's been no complaints. Whereas you ask me about everyone else, I've got a hell of things I can say about them. Things that I can't even say on uh, things that I can't even say on camera. But mate, this game's a doggy dog world. Absolutely, and I'll definitely be linking that in the description, man. Just as we sort of close this off, is there a message that you want to send to Roly? Roly, get ready, boy, because your ass is getting knocked the fuck out. Odie, thank you for your time, mate. It's been a really good interview. I appreciate it, man.